Welcome back everybody. I finally had a chance to sit down and have a talk with NVIDIA's Jarvis, their new conversational AI platform. I think it shows great promise for future applications. And I'm going to show you what it does right out of the box. Let's get started. So if you missed the last video, Jarvis is an end-to-end -end framework for the deployment of natural language processing models. It handles everything from speech recognition, uh, named entity recognition, uh, text-to-speech translation, as well as question and answering functionality. We're going to put some of that to the test today, uh, and NVIDIA was kind enough to loan me the RTX Titan because the models do not actually compile on lesser tier peasant GPUs like my 2080 Ti's. So if we use some of the handy dandy scripts that they gave us, so sudo jarvis start.sh, sorry bash, this will start the uh, jarvis server after we input our sudo password and it's gonna take a little bit to deploy the models, uh, but when it finishes, we'll be able to see exactly how much VRAM this stuff takes, and it does indeed take way more than a paltry 2080 Ti can provide. While we're waiting for this to deploy, I wanna remind you that the purpose of this isn't for people that really wanna go deep into learning how things actually work, it's for people that want to take a product, fine tune it, and deploy a business very, very quickly to start making money as quickly as possible. If you have any great ideas for natural language processing based businesses, please drop a comment down below. I'm always happy to hear your ideas, steal them, and implement them on my own. So let's go ahead and see how much VRAM we're using now. And you can see it's using up here 15,000 and some odd megabytes. That is oftentimes much more than the 11,000 or so megabytes available to a 2080 Ti. And the vast bulk of that is coming from the Triton server down here. All this other stuff just has to do with OBS, which I'm running right now, as well as uh, the KDE desktop running in the background because I'm on K Ubuntu 18.04, if you're curious. So the first thing I want to do is check out some of the question and answering functionality. So to do that, we'll go ahead and clear this and take a look at what other scripts they have provided. So what these scripts are doing, if it's not clear to you, is they're basically running Docker containers in the background. So right now the Triton server is running on my local machine. And if I want to actually start using it, making calls to that server, then I have to start the um, client side Docker image. Sorry, I can't type and speak at the same time. And so the first thing it'll try to do is uh, pull the Docker image, which it finds it already exists because I already have it. And it skips that pool and go ahead and goes ahead and launches that container. So if you do a quick list, you can see that you have a whole bunch of stuff here. We're interested in the notebooks and we're going to go ahead and fire up our Jupyter notebook to check that out in the browser. So we'll say Jupyter notebook and uh, IP equals zero 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 allow root notebook or work notebooks okay ah as usual I misspelled notebook dir there is an extra O in there okay so now it is running we go ahead and copy this URL and we're going to switch to the browser and see what is going on. As I was editing this, I realized I forgot to tell you guys to sign up for GTC, NVIDIA's GPU Technology Conference. It happens this April, April 12th through 16th to be exact. Uh, it is totally free online, so you don't even have to get out of your chair. It's going to feature talks by a wide variety of speakers from a number of industries, things like augmented and virtual reality, artificial intelligence, data science, you name it, they're gonna have a speaker on it. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to register today. So here you see we have a couple of notebooks for us to play around with. Let's go ahead and check out this Q and A. There we go. So I think you can see that. Um, so this will first of all install the Wikipedia package. Now keep in mind this is all running in Docker. This isn't installed in your local machine. If you wanted to run this on your local machine you could uh, do pip install Wikipedia from your local command line. So then of course you have your usual uh, imports. Uh, if you're not familiar with this gRPC this is a 
remote procedure call. So what it does is, it's a remote procedure call, so what it does is it handles calls between some server, we send some data and receive data in return. And then you have other stuff from the Jarvis API. And so we're gonna start with a very simple input query for uh, Wikipedia, and it's gonna have a number of articles that it matches up uh, to get some idea. So it's gonna say, we have a summary for speech recognition, window speech recognition, and speaker recognition. And then we're gonna go ahead and make the call to uh, Jarvis to see its output for it. So you can see the answer here, or you know, my mug is in the way, one second. There we go, my ugly face is out of the way. It says, if you can't read it, let's scroll in. Make that a little bit more legible. What is speech recognition? Answer, an interdisciplinary subfield of computer science and computational linguistics that develops methodologies and technologies that enable the recognition and translation of spoken language into text by computers. So let's go ahead and change this around to some other interesting input queries. Let um, me scroll up a bit here, comment that one out. Input query equals, let's say, um, what is graphene? So this is from the field of physics, if you're not familiar with it, graphene is a single uh, layer of, a, of carbon atoms. It has a property that it is a um, gapless semiconductor. So the electrons flow without any scattering, uh, which gives them really ultra relativistic velocities. It's a really cool discovery. It was fabricated by, uh, I forget the guy's name, but uh, he made it by taking some uh, graphite from a pencil and using scotch tape to just kind of peel off layer by layer. So he played with scotch tape for pro presumably hours to get a single layer of carbon atoms. And he won a Nobel Prize for this. Not just obviously that, but for the detection of it uh, and showing that it could be used for probably some useful things. So let's go ahead and run that and see what it says. And so it gets stuff on, ooh, Graphene OS. I don't know what that is actually. I'd have to look that up but let's go ahead and make the call to our Jarvis server. So it says it's an allotrope of carbon. Okay, so that is a rather uh, succinct and correct answer. So let's come back up and ask something a little bit more, I don't know, difficult. What can be, what can graphene be used for? And we'll run it and okay, so it's graphene, graphite oxide, potential applications of graphene, run it. It conducts heat and electricity. Okay, thank you, Wikipedia. So now you have to keep in mind this was trained with Wikipedia. If you were intrepid and you wanted to make a science-based question and answering system, what you would do is you would go to the archive and you would scrape a bunch of data. You would scrape uh, abstracts, papers, things like that to uh, get a whole bunch of text to feed into this question and answering system, and then you could get more intelligent answers about graphene or other physical systems out of it. And in fact, that's kind of what I want to do. Uh, physics is obviously part of my background. I have a PhD in physics, if you don't know. So it's something of uh, interest to me, uh, as well as artificial intelligence. So I think that a system that could answer intelligent questions about um, physics topics would be kind of interesting to see. So look for that in a future video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. But let's go ahead and exit out of this and check out some of the uh, transcription capabilities of the Jarvis system. Okay, so we are back at the terminal and I'm done with this particular set of applications for now. Uh, as we saw, there was other stuff in here. If I scroll up, that's a long way to scroll up. There was uh, an API for the uh, speech API, excuse me, a demo for the speech API. Uh, there's some other stuff to play around with in there, but what I wanna play around with next is something also very interesting. Let's move my face yet again. And that is going to be the transcription service. So I've already downloaded the uh, Docker image. Uh, it's at nvcr.io slash all that stuff. It's the speech client samples. So let's go ahead and run that. Of course, providing our Docker, our sudo password. And then if we do a list, we see that we have a samples directory and we can um, check out the 
Jarvis contact and see what's going on there. So the first thing we have to do is edit our environment.txt file to tell it to launch the server on our local machine. So if you see here, Jarvis API URL. So this is where we're going to be making the API calls. This is my local machine. So this will be my local um, IP address 172.170.1.551. And I don't think I need to change anything else. So we write quit. And then we do npm run start. And then it runs the node server. This is built on node. But what we're gonna do next is head back to the browser and we are going to see the Jarvis contact app in action. And so if you saw the uh, first video where I showed one of NVIDIA's demo videos, uh, this is the application they used for that quick little call between two of their engineers. Let's move my face back up to here. And you can use this to make calls. We're not going to do that because we don't have to. But the first thing it did was ask for access to my microphone and camera. Uh, it's not using the camera because I'm using it for the video. It doesn't have access to it. But it should be able to start transcribing my text. Perfect, you can see it is doing that in real time. And you can see it actually makes some mistakes. So it does some other interesting stuff. Um, it will do named entity recognition. So if we say something like international business machines, interesting, it didn't flag that. <laughs> so if we say Intel Corporation, okay, it flags that as an organization. So it does okay. Now I don't know which model is running in the background. When we did the uh, the quote unquote influencer briefing, they had um, a demo with the uh, garden variety vanilla automatic speech recognition algorithm running and then with the Jarvis algorithm running and then as well as with some more advanced fine-tuned algorithms and you can see it kind of <laughs> got confused with what I was saying so garden variety it tagged as a miscellaneous thing but it is uh, doing its best to figure out what I'm saying. So this is totally functional. It does seem to have a few bugs to be worked out. So it is a beta. Uh, it is totally functional. And in fact, if you're running an organization, you're not going to be using this right out of the box. You're going to be supplying your own data to fine tune it as well as testing it. So I want to head back to the terminal and see what type of output it provides us because it's pretty interesting. So you can see that it repeated the text many times. And I don't know what's up with that. I might shoot the engineering team a message to see what's going on. Yeah, very interesting. So I would call this functional. Uh, the end user doesn't see the multiple outputs of the transcript because they're getting the um, final product to the web browser. So it doesn't really matter that it prints this to the terminal a whole bunch of times. The end user never sees it, who cares? Um, Interesting. Another thing I note is that it doesn't recognize filler speech. Um, ah, uh, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this for now. Okay, so that was the automatic speech recognition. And you can see it's a little rough around the edges. It's functional. It does named entity recognition, which is potentially useful. It could also be the way I'm speaking. It could also be the fact that, uh, and in fact, actually, now that I think about it, it's probably the fact that I'm using uh, the microphone for uh, recording this video as well. So if I had to guess, I would say that's probably behind the multiple print out, printouts of the statement. Uh, because when I played around with this on my own without recording a video, I didn't see that. So I suspect it's due to the fact that I'm using OBS Studio to, <clears throat> excuse me, to record this video at the same time as interacting with the um, web application. So that's probably the reason behind that. But 
even that aside, it does have a few difficulties, but I, nothing I would say to be show stopping. And even in their own demo video, it showed that it wasn't 100% accurate. Um, so that's good for them for being honest. And there's no trickery involved here. Uh, this is a beta. They're making no bones about it. And in my mind, it shows a great deal of promise because end users aren't going to be using the uh, algorithm right out of the box. They're going to be doing their own fine tuning and uh, modification of it to make sure that it is 99.59% you know, stable for their use case. So one thing I haven't done, uh, I practiced this video before to make sure everything worked. Uh, let's check out the chat bot. Now let's do the Jarvis weather. Let's do Jarvis weather. I've played with that. And the reason I want to start there is because you have to get an API key for the weather service for something called weather stack to actually use it. And I've already done that. Uh, so give me one second. I'll get that up and running. So I think the first thing we want to do is check out config.py. Uh, so this Jarvis speech API URL, we have to change that just like we did with the um, other application. And that should be 172.1701.5051. And I'm going to go ahead and input my access key here. And I'm not going to show you that, so that way you can't use my access key. Just go to WeatherStack and get it uh, one for yourself. They're free. You just have to create an account. So one second, I'm going to grab it and then input it. And then I'll see you back at the terminal. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do Python 3 main.py and see if this works. Okay, so it's starting the server. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up and we will see how it works. How was the weather in Tokyo? How's the weather in Phoenix? How's the weather in Phoenix now? Okay, so I managed to break it. Now, I don't know if it recorded the desktop audio out sound. I haven't tested this with OBS Studio yet, but it did. I could hear it from my um, headphones over there. It was outputting the text from the screen as speech. It does have its own voice, so the text-to-speech algorithm does work. Now, let's go ahead and check out the output in the console to see what it had to say about it. So, it doesn't like the word now, and uh, this is, again, just a beta. This is a sample application. Uh, so if you wanted to use this for anything uh, legitimate, anything like a business, then you would simply do away with the use of illegal words or simply broaden its vocabulary. Now is not that difficult of a word, and this is something I'm sure is trivial to fix. Uh, this isn't being advertised as something out of the box you'd want to use as a product. It's just showing you the capabilities of the system. Of course, it can't have... Um, you know, you can't cover every single corner case. And so some stuff is going to break it. And that's kind of my job, or at least my self, uh, self, uh, proclaimed title is, you know, guy who tries to break stuff. That's what I like to do. Uh, and I'm glad to find the limitations of this, but from what I've seen, uh, the potential is enormous. So this is a system that, uh, does everything pretty much you need for natural language processing. It has everything kind of baked in from the very beginning. And so my, assessment is that their claim that it is uh, something that could potentially revolutionize uh, AI type development, at least insofar as deep learning is concerned, uh, isn't hyperbolic. Uh, it is within the realm of possibility. Now, to further test that in a future video, I'm going to uh, check out the claim that you can deploy models with minimal code. They did show us a demo uh, during the briefing, and it does look like there is very minimal use of um, terminal commands and data pre-processing that you can use to fine-tune models and then deploy those. So as far as I can tell, uh, it's an accurate claim, but I'm going to test it myself just to be sure. As I said, I want to take a look at using some archive data around scientific research papers to kind of make a chat bot for uh, scientific research. If that's something that would interest you, make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. And I don't think I have a whole lot more to say on it. This is kind of the uh, the limit of the, the basic demos they have uh, built in. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. And in the next video on this topic, I'm going to go ahead and check out uh, the full pipeline for 
um, fine-tuning and deploying my own model. I will see you in the next video.